Hey guys, Marco here for GarageFarm.net with another Blender tutorial. Today we'll be going over one of Blender 2.8's essential features, Collections. Collections serve as scene layers, groups, and render layers at the same time. With them we can segment a complex scene into manageable parts, and we can use Collections as a neat way to instantiate objects in a scene, and link objects between multiple scenes. We can also use Collections to create render layers to help us with compositing later on. We'll go over these use cases one by one in this tutorial, so sit tight and enjoy! If you've only begun exploring 2.8, you might notice that our layer system is nowhere to be seen. This is because we can use our collections to organize our scene into layers instead. So here's a scene with all of the basic elements. We've got some meshes, some lights, and some cameras. We can sort out our elements according to type by moving them into their own collections, either by using the outliner or by simply hitting M and selecting or creating a destination collection. Now we have the ability to tell Blender which elements should be visible or selectable by toggling the icons on our collection hierarchies. We might also want to be able to make everything visible or selectable right away. And to do this we can create another instance of our outliner and in this one filter our scene by objects and not collections. We can select all our objects and drag them into a new collection in my original outliner. Doing this will allow us to have our objects reside in more than one collection. We can instance collections like we would objects. A collection instance can consist of many different objects that can be edited or even replaced entirely. This means that we can keep meshes that make up a prop separate. We can switch them around or edit them however we like, and as long as they are placed in the collection being instanced, every instance should update correctly. We can also do this for collections we link from external blend files. I link this collection of trees from another scene, and I can load the original scene of these trees, move my trees to a separate collection, and generate a new tree to replace them. When I save and reload my layout scene, I get my new tree instead of the original one. And if you like populating your meshes with particle systems, you'll be happy to know that you can choose collections as your particle uh, or hair object now. Render layers deserve their own topic, but a general use case for render layers is compositing additional elements to a scene after it's been rendered. Render layers allow us to do this without having to re-render the entire scene or manually create masks. Here's a little project I've been working on and let's say that as I'm looking at the render, I decide that I would like another candle to be placed just behind my character's uh, left foot. I need to make sure that Blender renders only the part of this candle that's visible to the camera 
and preserve the reflections and shadows on the bowl. So to do this, I'll duplicate my candle and add it to its own collection and lay it out where I want. I'll take my character object, which is a link collection, and add it to its own collection in this scene. Now I'll right click on this collection and set my view layer to hold out. This will use my character to mask out the part of the candle behind her. Now I'll select all collections other than my character and the new candle and set these collections to exclude. What that will do is prevent any other collection except the candle and my character to be rendered. Now for the bowl. This is more of a bonus tip um, than something entirely about collections but I thought it would be nice to include it here anyway. So I'll take my rug object, duplicate it, and assign it to its own collection. I'll select only enough of the rug to act as a shadow catcher for the bowl, to keep the shadow cast by the candle on the ground plane, as well as a reflection of the rug. Now all I need to do is go to my cycle settings and make sure I have shadow catcher activated. quick preview render to make sure that the bottom of my bowl is casting shadows and is also picking up the reflection of the rug beneath it. In other situations we could use set indirect on our collections but using the shadow catcher seemed like a more straightforward approach in this instance. So I'll hit render and here's the result. Now in my compositing file, all I'll need to do is add this render to my shot. So I'm just going to hit Shift A and select the render of my new candle for my library. And then I'm just going to take an alpha over node I already have in my setup and duplicate it so that I can mix my current composite with my new candle render so that the new candle is sitting right on top. And because of everything that we've done with render layers, um, that's all I really need to do. And that's it. Alright, I hope this tutorial was useful to you guys. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy blending from all of us at garagefarm.net.